Hey church, how's everybody doing today? Thank you so much for being with us. Today we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about being offended and talking about how there's power of life and death in the tongue. So let's break this down. Uh, I was thinking about this idea of being offended. And um, I don't know if you've ever had this situation, but I was uh, going to a new church and I love this church. I was so excited about it. And I went and I sat down on the front row. I'm front and center. And this lady comes up to me and says, hey, you're in my seat. And it wasn't just like a joking or kind of a friendly. It was like, no, you're in my seat. I need you to move. And I was so mad. I couldn't, I couldn't focus during worship. I couldn't focus on the message. All I could think about was this rude lady telling me that I was in her seat. And even when I left, she made a joke again about me sitting there. And I was like, don't worry, I'm going to be back next week sitting in that same spot. I didn't handle it very well. But I was thinking about how in life, offense is guaranteed. It doesn't matter at your job or, or at church or in your family. At some point in time, you are going to be offended. So let's, let's read our passage today. This is Proverbs 18, verses 19 through 21. It says this, An offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with bars. Wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk, and this is bad for me, those who love to talk will reap the consequences. And I was thinking about this idea of being offended. And the one thing is this, as you go through life, we need to understand that we're going to be offended by people. You know, God uses imperfect people like me and you to do his work. The problem with being imperfect is that at some point in time, we are going to fall short of God's standard. At some point in time, our flesh is going to come out and we're going to rub somebody the wrong way. We're going to say the wrong thing. They're going to say the wrong thing to us. We're going to get into an argument. We cannot escape it. You know, even if you were to drive to a, a desert island and be by yourself, you're still not going to escape imperfect people because you're imperfect. You can't get away from it. But the good news is that God gives us a formula for what happens when we are offended. You know, uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to a church and they're kind of dealing with some different things. And he says, hey, this is what happens when you get offended. This is Colossians um, chapter 3, verse 13. It says this, Make allowance for each other's faults. What he's saying here is make room for each other's faults because it's going to happen. He said, and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Here's what Paul is saying. Hey, get ready. Eventually, you're going to be offended. So go ahead and set aside some grace for these people because it's going to happen. The second thing is this. Forgive them quickly. And remember this, that you can forgive others because God forgave you. You know, God is perfect, and how he interacts with us is always perfect. The problem in our relationship with us and God is never God. It's always us. And if God, who is perfect, can extend grace and forgiveness to us, then we should be able to give it back to others. We can forgive because we can remember that we have been forgiven. What this does is it gives us the freedom to not hold on to offense, but to be able to move past it and to reconcile with other people. You know, the enemy, you know, the Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And a lot of the times we don't have issues with God's plan for our life. Like we want to, as a Christian, you want to do the will that God has for you. And so a lot of times the enemy will not come at, you know, your will or the promises, but what he'll do is he'll bring offense against you because he knows if, hey, if I can get him separated from his family, if I can get him to quit his job, if I can get him to leave that church, then God's plans and purposes for my life will not be fulfilled. And so what the enemy will do is not attack those things, but he will try to get you out of alignment with where God wants you to be. Because if he can get you out of church, if he can get you not speaking to your family, then the enemy's will will prevail. That's why it's so important to remember that this is not about being right and wrong, but this is about being in the right position to do what God has called you to do. God's plans and purposes in your life are far greater than any small offense that somebody can bring against you. The second thing is this. Remember that life and death is in the tongue. And here's what this means. You can either speak life over people or you can speak death over people. Life means that you build others up. 
Death means that you tear others down. And in every relationship, in, in our work environments, at church, in our families, we have the option to either speak life or death. Notice that, that Solomon doesn't give us a middle ground. No, you either are speaking life or you're speaking death. And what I want to challenge you is this, is that we need to be a people that speaks life. You know, and this can be challenging for us because if you've never had anybody speak life over you, if you've lived from a place of where you've been criticized or you've been hurt by people, a lot of the times we mirror what we receive. So if you grew up in an environment where you had a lot of death spoken over you, it's very natural for you to communicate with people in the same way. But here's what God wants to do. God wants to redeem the words of people who hurt you. Because see, they may have spoken life over you. You may have had people tell you, hey, you're worthless, you're not worth anything at all, or, or you don't have this ability. But God comes in and says, hey, you are my son, you are my daughter. I love you. There is plans and purposes. There is gifts that I have put in you. There are great things that I want you to do in my name. And what happens is God begins to replace their death with his life. And because Jesus has put life inside of us, then we are able to take that and give it to others that we can speak life to other people because God has spoken life over us. And so I want to challenge you with two things. I got two application points for you. One, be quick to forgive. Ask God to search your heart today. Is there anything that offends you? Is there anything that is causing you to step out of alignment with what God has for you? Are there people that you need to call up and say, hey, I need to, we need to reconcile this relationship? Maybe there's some people that you need to go and you need to ask forgiveness for because of some things that you have said. The second thing is let's encourage people today. Let's speak life over people. You know, ask God for this. Say, God, give me an opportunity to speak life over somebody. Maybe it's somebody at church in your small group. Maybe it's a coworker that just needs encouragement. But ask God today to give you the opportunity to speak life. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much that you have spoken life over us, God, that you forgave us and you allow us the ability to forgive others. Father, I pray that you would continue to grow us, God, that you would draw us close to yourself and that we could love other people like you have loved us. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.